Um, David, we've just seen uh, some news about uh, Harry McKay and Liam Jones. Disappointing to lose those two for the rest of the year. Yeah, very disappointing, obviously. Uh, they've both had great years for us, been good leaders out on the field, and uh, and they're trained with great intensity throughout the week. So, um, yeah, look, it's disappointing, but it will give an opportunity. So Brody Kemp will make his debut this week, which is really exciting. Um, talking to Murph throughout the week, and uh, Murph debuted in Cooters 250th, and Brody gets to debut in uh, Murph's 300th. So uh, uh, it's a really exciting time for him, and uh, someone else will get an opportunity in the front half as well. What can you tell us about Brody? What sort of players he? Yeah, look, he's had a tough run. He, he did his ACL leading into the uh, the draft, and then when he got to Carlton, he, he hurt his ankle. So um, he's a he's a strong defender, marks the ball well, um, uses it uses the ball pretty well out of the back half. He's he's got a bit of a dash. He has played midfield and forward at times throughout his junior career, but we see him fitting in as a as a second tall, third tall down in our back half, and that's where he's been playing and playing some really good footy. Played on Kyle Hooker last week and, and competed really strongly against him. David, how are you coping at the moment with all the increased media speculation and the fact that the review is, uh, is being shown to the board tonight? Uh, look, I'm coping okay. Uh, look, there's a fair bit going on. I'm super proud of uh, the way our, uh, our coaching staff, football club, football administration side, um, have uh, gelled together and, and, and keep turning up, bringing great energy. Um, the four walls in here is, is a really good place at the moment in terms of coming in to get your job done. Um, look, I was, uh, the other night I, I had a few, I've had a few other coaches reach out to me and um, Damien Hardwick reached out to me and he, he talked about Richmond's courage to, to back him in um, when things weren't going. In 2016 he went through a similar thing and to, to stay strong and um, yeah, look, it, it gives you confidence that um, I, I, I'm really hopeful that, uh, that our club back me in and have the courage to stick to the course and, and to, to finish what we've started because uh, I've said all along, I really believe in what we're doing. I believe in this playing group and where we're going. And um, yeah, the reassurance to have someone like Dima to reach out to, to let you know and to understand what you're going through was, was really nice and comforting. There's been some reports about... Um, about, about uh, you know, player unrest or frustration among players with your coaching. Do you reject these? Have you seen these and do you reject this? Uh, I heard a little bit yesterday. Uh, I got briefed, but um, oh, look, oh, I'm really comfortable with the relationships that I have with the players. Um, I, I probably feel it's one of, the, one of my strengths as a coach. Um, don't get me wrong, there's players at times you have to challenge and they don't like it. There's players that want to play AFL footy and aren't in the team and um, there's always going to be uh, some challenging and, and uh, some conflicting conversations that occur but the overall feel in terms of relationships, I have no issue with, uh, with where that is at at this football club. I have absolute belief the players believe in me and where the club's going at the moment and I, I think you look at the guys, um, Harry, uh, Jacob Wiedering, uh, Cripper that have re-signed, some of our key leaders uh, they're signing because they believe in the direction of this football club and, and, and when they signed, they, they believed in, I was part of that. You think you've been given a fair run? Um, you've only been there, what, 48 games, David? Uh, oh, yeah, it's an interesting one. Uh, look, I think the speculation around it all has is, is probably been intensified. Um, in terms, when I took over, I think we'd won four of 44. Now we're 21 of that 48. And in terms of progression, I, I think that's probably normal. Um, would we love to have won more? Yes. Would we love to have been a little bit more consistent with throughout games and in different areas? Yes, but it's, it's a learning curve. It's a journey and, and we're on that. And, and I, I've said all along, I'm really comfortable where it's going. Um, look, it's a challenging now. To perform at your best, you need a, a, a psychologically safe environment. And right now, that's, that's a challenge for us with everything going on. So um, I really commend all the, the players and staff, the way they keep fronting up and bringing great effort and, and turning up and, and trying their best in, in an environment which, which is a bit challenging. But that's what the AFL throws at you and um, we'll keep turning up and, and focusing on what we can control and being our best. Have you been told anything about next year? Yeah, David. Uh, look, I'm contracted for next year, so that, as far as that goes, that's all I've uh, that's all I've been focusing on. Um, I'm planning for next year in, in terms of where I'm at and what, where my mind is thinking. Um, but um, in terms of the direction, no, and, and the review and the outcomes of the review, I haven't heard anything about that. Do you expect to get when do you expect to get some information in relation to the review, or when do you expect the board to let you know what what they're thinking as a result of the review, David? 
Yeah, looking forward to it. Oh, I'm keen to hear the learnings and find out what, where we can grow and improve. There's plenty of areas that we feel we can grow in, and I'd love to get the, uh, the views of the three guys that have done the review as well and how to get better. Um, I'm expecting that'll be post-season. Um, I think uh, the board may be uh, getting that tonight, so they'll, they'll, uh, they'll have a look at that information and uh, expect after the season's finished that they'll share with that with us and how we can grow and uh, continue to get better and, and get this club back to where it is, uh, where it belongs and, and being a really special football club for a lot of people to be part of. David, were you surprised that one member of the review couldn't get to the club at all? Matthew Pavlich having been in Perth the whole time, you know, doing a review via Zoom must be quite difficult. And also the second part of that, the review was commissioned when you guys were still well and truly in the hunt to play finals at about round 10. Given how psychologically difficult it is to perform at your best when you've got this hanging over your head, as you just said, Oh, well, I suppose uh, when they plan for Matthew to, to be part of it, uh, my guess is they were planning for him to come in and, and COVID's, look, COVID's thrown a lot of challenges at a lot of people and um, this football club along with the AFL have, have had to deal with that. But in terms of, uh, in terms of the review, look, oh, I think the review is a, a great idea in the sense of uh, wanting to learn and to grow and to get better. How it's, how it's transitioned in, in this case and how it... Uh, how it's unfolded, it's probably become a bigger thing than just learning to become better. And that's probably the, the challenge for us as a footy club and for a playing group and for staff to keep focusing on what we can control. And that's something I've been really proud of. I think uh, to a man and uh, to a woman at this footy club, everyone keeps driving really hard for, for high performance and to be at our best. What do you think of the way the club's managed the review? There hasn't been a lot of public support for you while it's been happening in recent weeks, David? Um, yeah, look, uh, I have to admit, I, I, I try not to uh, to look at too much of the, the, the media side of things. So in terms of the support, um, yeah, I haven't tracked that as well as uh, the criticism. So um, in terms of what I can do, the support I've had from uh, particularly Brad Lloyd, um, from Andrew Russell, from Kane, uh, from all the assistant coaches and, and the players, I've had great support. So uh, that's where I feel that... Uh, I'm confident in, in the group we've got and where we're going and, and uh, I feel we've got each other's backs in here in, inside these walls and that's what we've got to keep keep doing. David, do you that's... feel like the, the, um, the injury list, the extended injury list has essentially meant that you've coached with one hand behind your back for the entire year? It's one of the longest injury lists in the AFL and has been for most of the season. Uh, look, it's, it's, it's part of the game. It's a challenge and... Um, yeah, look, it's it's disappointing. We'd love to have our best players out there. Probably not so much the injury list, but the cohesion, the ability to get games together for this group and um, probably the age profile we're at, it'd, it'd be really nice to be able to to have sort of 15, 18 of them playing large chunks of the season together. And, and that's, that's going to really allow us to grow and continue to grow. But um, I'm really confident that we'll get that right going forward and, and we'll get those guys back out in the park and, and they'll get the chance to play together and get that cohesion and, and keep growing as a f football club. What would you need to do, David, to take the lead next year? What would I need to do? What does the footy team and, the, and you as a coach need to do? I mean, Dimmer reached out to you and lent support and they obviously bounced really quickly after the club backed him. What do you think the club and yourself would need to do to, to make a similar kind of leap? Oh, I think that's probably it, is the belief, instilling belief in each other and, and backing in what we've started and continuing. Um, we've made some steps. Oh, I feel like uh, we've really grown as a group. We've, uh, we've grown in certain areas. Uh, I think from a leadership point, you look at the Jacob Weedering and, and Harry Mackay, Cripper, really growing in that area, I think they're going to take it, adding Adam Saad and, and Zach Williams, the synergy of those guys are starting to play some good footy with, with our guys again. So I, I think that uh, we're sticking together, sticking the course. Um, we've got to tighten up our defence and, and, and our stoppage work. There's, there's no doubt about that, but um, I feel the work ethic and the way we go about it here, um, we'll be able to do that next year with a good pre-season. Last one. Thanks, guys. David, David, if... if at the board meeting tonight, they decided that you're not the right man to take the club forward. Would you want them to tell you before the game on the weekend, or would you prefer them wait till the end of the season? Um, oh, look, I'm, I'm committed to doing this season and next at the moment, so that's what I'll focus on. So um, oh, I don't think that they're going to get the review to do, tonight, so I dare say they'll uh, need a bit of time to ponder that. But I'm planning to coach out the season, and that's what I'll do, and I'll do that to the best of my ability and um, with the support of the guys around me. And, and uh, 
Oh, like I said, I'm really confident in I'm the guy to take this club forward, and I believe in myself, and I believe in the people here and the players. Can I ask one more? Sorry, but just Eddie Betts, we all saw early in the week, David. How is he, and what's your response to to seeing that? Yeah, I, I watched it. Kane sent it to me uh, yesterday, and I'll, I'm not going to lie, I brought a tear to my eye, knowing how much joy Eddie's brought to. Uh, to so many people and, and to see him hurting like that and I know who he is. He's a carer, he wants the best for people and to see him get to the stage where he says he's too tired to, to, to keep fighting. We know he will keep fighting, for even, but for him to get to that stage, um, it hurts. It hurts a lot and we've had a tough week um, with what Sam Doherty's going through at the moment. Um, that hurts us as well. It's, it's one of our good mates that's it's got a bigger fight than any fight on a footy field. So. Um, yeah, look, it's, it's been an emotional, it's been a tough week, but that's what gives me a lot of confidence. Our groups stick together, they, they fight hard for each other, and um, even uh, round four, I think we went up to the Gold Coast and uh, we had a little fella, Slater, who came into our group for a day and he passed away yesterday, so um, best wishes to him and his family. But the way our players got around him and reached out and made his day so special gives me confidence that this club is going to be a, is a, is a special place and it's going to be a, a really powerful club again. Sorry, can I ask just Thanks, one Drew. more? Um, are you confident that Adam Chera will come to your club next year? Uh, no, look, we, we'd love to always continue to add talent to our, our list, but we won't go into conversations around uh, certain individuals. But um, look, we've got a good list, but we'll always look to build.